from harsh to humbled from harsh to humbled and um, it's kind of my personal journey but also I think it can apply to some of us here in the church as well and uh, brother Fannin asked us to kind of reflect on uh, the last three years that we've got to know each other and how we've got to grow together as a church and so I've kind of wrote my sermon with that in mind I wanted to uh, start off with a very brief, very brief overview of our church's history. I know I mentioned that to some of y'all before, and they're like, oh man, there's 45 minutes right there. But, you know, about three years ago, uh, it was August the 6th, is that right, or 5th? August 6th uh, in 2017, that's when we got launched, and we had a great weekend. We had a soul winning mega marathon not mega marathon but a soul winning marathon that day on saturday um and how many people got saved you remember brother Finn? 121 yeah it was it was a big big weekend and then we had you know it was standing room only elbow to elbow everybody cramped in that small little building we used to be in and it was hot and uh you know but it was good everybody was very excited getting to learn everybody's name and who they were and where they came from and uh you know donnie romero was our pastor from fort worth texas uh, steadfast and he installed brother fannin as our as our boots on the ground preacher and so he was our local leadership in the church and we were all very zealous and excited soul winning church we finally been we've been looking forward to this date for a long time and uh yeah it was great times we had all kind of different events going on and uh we had great fellowship good preaching and we even had our first wedding in the church ben and alicia got married several of y'all were in attendance and um lots of baptisms that year and just a lot of good things happening and we closed out 17 and started in 18 had a great 2018 we were just uh blowing away all of my expectations i just i just knew we were um, uh, a thriving church had lots of visitors lots of uh you know, stimulation and growth and uh it was just good things we were we were taking big chunks off the map every time we went out soul winning and uh you know well 2018 closed out and 2019 started off with a very big bang uh, I think it was the first Wednesday of the year we learned that Pastor Romero was stepping down we didn't exactly know why two days later we found out why or the next day later we found out why and uh, uh, the powers that be uh, decided to throw a huge monkey wrench into all of our lives and I'm not going to go into all of that but you know that there was a big fallout and uh, you know some churches never experience a, a, a church split some churches are fortunate enough to go through an entire you know lifetime of people and, and their children they can go through that church and never even experience a split and for us to go through a church split at the halfway mark the the year and a half mark you know that was very detrimental to us it was like uh, it's still in our infancy of the church and uh, I've, I've kind of been thinking about it and you, you know it's hard to believe but this fat guy can actually run a marathon but i had to do a lot of training for that day and uh, it's 26.2 miles but I kind of likened it to you're starting out in a race you're running a marathon you're you're running 26.2 miles and on mile one and a half you know you face plant you get up and you got blood all over your knees are just shredded and you're like oh so luckily you know not luckily but by the grace of God we persevered right and uh you know we didn't give up we didn't throw in the towel we just kept going kept moving forward but not as fast let's face it not as fast as we used to be but um hey the the spirit's still willing and the flesh got a little weak we took a beating on that 
we lost a lot of friends. You know, sometimes when you stand up for what's right and the truth, you, you take a stand. Sometimes they take a little bit of flesh. And, um, you know, so I'll just tell you about my experience, why I titled this sermon From Harsh to Humbled, is because before the whole split, I was a very harsh person. I was still a likable, friendly, loving guy. Wouldn't you agree, babe? Yeah. But when it came to social media platforms, for example, Facebook, you know, as you learn the Bible and you take in a lot of good preaching and you start to uh, take in all this knowledge, well, what does knowledge do? Puffeth up. up with pride, right? And uh, as you take up this knowledge that you start to uh, see all the foolishness that people post on social media, the things that they stand for, and it, it kind of grieves your soul and your spirit. And, and at the time, the only way I knew how to handle it was to correct the entire world. You know, I got to set this guy straight. I got to set this person straight. And I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed going to battle with my friends. And that's not right. You know, those are your so-called Facebook friends, and you shouldn't be looking for opportunity to pull out your sword every day on them and try to hack them in two. So, but, you know, that was my mentality back then, and, and once the whole split happened and we, we took our side and took our stand, those swords came back out, and they, they came back on most of us in this room, and you kind of reap what you sow. And I know I did. And so at that moment in time, I was uh, no longer the aggressor. I was the defender. And I was like, you have to defend your decision. Why? Why you don't believe your pastor is a reprobate? You know, that's just... <laughs> to this day, there are some Looney Tunes out there to still believe Brother Fannin is just, you know, hated by God. You know, just crazy. Nonsense. So, uh, went very quickly from being harsh to humbled. So since then, I've deactivated Facebook. I have uh, really no, no reason to go back. Just the other day, my parents were at the house. It was my birthday last week. And Mom said, I really wish you would kind of get back on Facebook and, you know, just kind of post some pictures of the kids for everybody to see. And I was like, Mom, I, no. <laughs> I was like, uh, there's so much. Like, now more than ever, summer 2020, there's so much more foolishness in the world. I would be trying, I, it would just bring back, I'd be digging up bones again. And uh, I don't need to be doing that because I, I have some very strong opinions about COVID-19 and, and people wearing face masks in their own private vehicles by themselves. And I, 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 would, I would probably lose my job. And so I said, if you want your grand you know, grandchildren to be provided for, it's probably best I... Don't go back on Facebook, keep my job, keep them fed, and we won't have to move in with you guys. So, you know, that was, that was my reasoning. But I, I said, I'll try to text you more often with some more pictures. Or you can always volunteer to babysit more than you do. But, uh, but actually, our, our parents actually babysit a, a lot. They do very well. So we, we're happy about that. Um, so that's kind of where I wanted to start from. And all of these last few years, of, as basically, if you boil it down to it, it, it reminds me, just do not omit the weightier matters of the law. That's what it comes down to. And so, you don't have to turn there. You're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, but in Matthew 23, verse 23, uh, Jesus is going after those Pharisees, and he says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. And so you're in, um, you're in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Let's just start reading the first three verses. The Bible reads, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, 
and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. So skip down to the last verse in the, in the chapter, verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So I want to just focus on some of the weightier matters of the law. And obviously, the first thing that we should always keep in mind is that we should love the Lord our God with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our, our uh, understand, all of our mind, um, soul and mind. But I want to focus on how we treat our fellow man. And the first thing is we need to have charity towards our brethren. And not just our brethren, but even the stranger. And, and you know, a lot of people would argue, well, we already have charity towards the stranger because we go out soul winning. And that's very true. But there's other ways we can serve our fellow man as well. And our, our brethren especially should, should be um, receiving our charity, our love towards them uh, in all manners. Like I said earlier, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, 1 says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And so we shouldn't be trying to one-up somebody or, or try to think, you know, well, hey, this guy is, you know, this guy is doing this thing, but I'm going to come out and show him, you know, my family's going to be more obedient in church. They're going to, you know, they're, that's just crazy. Don't, don't take a look at my kids, okay? Uh, they're always acting up and everything else. Um, but you see some of the, the holier-than-thous that we've kind of come across in the movement, and, you know, it's like some people believe uh, you know, women have zero right to speak in church at all. And, you know, their, their, their spouse, their wife might be a total mouse in the church and just not say anything to anybody, you know, or not even return a greeting. And if that's how they want to run their household, by all means, fine. But, you know, don't try to impose that on other believers and say, you know, uh, if you boil it down, we're trying to prevent... A woman usurping the authority of a man, especially in the pulpit. But that doesn't mean if, um, you know, she has something to say or to add, uh, she can't do so. But just don't try to speak during preaching time. And there's plenty of time to, ch to talk at church and to have your feelings uh, relayed and everything else. And it doesn't mean you have to be a mouse. In my opinion, you can speak, ladies. Just don't interrupt the preaching and... Uh, Feel free to sing out loud. Out sing all the guys. Do whatever you want. Just uh, it, when it comes to that, sometimes people can take things a little too far. So out of balance, exactly. And so my next point is, so the first, we should have charity towards our brethren and everybody else. But our second one is, we should not be a respecter of persons. And you don't have to turn there, but in James chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, the Bible reads, If you fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. But if ye have respect to persons, ye commit sin and are convinced of the law as transgressors. In my opinion, I believe the, the reason why the split even happened was because there was a, a major respecter of persons. Uh, several people were respecting the persons. And you can say, well, that was y'all. Y'all were respecting Brother Fannin too much, and y'all y'all were clearly in the wrong. I don't think so. The, the, the allegations that were brought forth uh, were never substantiated, never proven. They were just false uh, attacks, baseless claims, and, uh, you know... I still believe in you're innocent until proven guilty, and that's the law of the land, and that's how we, we do things around here. But some people will, will take the word of someone who barely knows a man who lives, you know, a uh, 48-hour journey away by car, and, um, you know, just take them at their word and turn their back on a beloved friend. And that's, that's the respecter of person. God doesn't respect persons. He's not a respecter of persons, and we shouldn't be either. My third point is reconciliation. When all this fell out, I knew that some of the people that I had burned bridges with in the past 
I knew that was my fault and it was up to me to make it right. So I reached out to some of my friends on Facebook and social media, some of the ones that I had went after with the with the sword, and, you know, and not in a not in a loving way, but in a I'm going to set you straight and everything else and they they take it the wrong way. I called them up and it was just mainly people in my hometown and people within the new IFB and ex-members of the new IFB movement. The, uh, just people that I needed to call and get some things off my chest, say I'm sorry, and graciously every one of them has accepted the apology. Great friends again, moving on with life. And that's how it should be. But Matthew chapter 5 verse 23 says, Therefore if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. You know, sometimes I wonder if God holds back blessings from us because we still have loose ends. And uh, I ask him, you know, God, if there's still someone out there I need to make amends with, get right with, put him in my heart, let me call him up and set things right. Um, but I, I know that I harbored some some ill will feelings towards people and you know sometimes the apology doesn't come sometimes they've done equally or worse to you I mean you know just think of how we ended up in this situation um, you know uh, Pastor Romero's sins caught up to him and ruined our our church and not ruined it not killed it but he definitely threw a huge monkey wrench into it, derailed us and took us off the tracks for a little while. Uh, we got back on board and we started rolling again and he offered an apology. You know, he, he, he said in his video, uh, he made a public video offering his apology and I accept his apology and, and that's all there is to it. I have no beefs with him. I've tried reaching out to him a few times. Um, sometimes he responds by text and sometimes it's ghosts you know it doesn't I don't hear anything back but uh, sometimes you won't get an apology from the people that wronged you the most and that brings me to my next point suffer yourselves to be defrauded first Corinthians chapter 6 just go back a few pages in your Bible and first Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 7 now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because you go to law one with another why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? So sometimes you just have to say, you know what? Thank God, God doesn't hold things against us. Because, I'll be honest with you, I don't always confess my sins and my faults before God and ask for His forgiveness for all of my sins. Some of them I just forget about. Some of them I just never make the time and I'm, you know, it's, it's one thing to be sinning against the Lord and several hours later say, God, I really need your help in this area. Good thing he doesn't say, well, hey, you know what? You forgot to ask for forgiveness for that sin yesterday. I'm not even hearing you right now. You know, God loves us so much that he can look past our transgressions. Not only has he already forgiven all of our sins, even the ones we haven't even committed yet, but, you know, he wants us to come to him with a humble heart, to confess our sins, to, to stay, you know, to get right with God. That's really for our benefit. Uh, we're, we're, we're not hurting God um, when we, we're hurting ourselves. When we don't go to him and apologize, that, we're doing the damage to ourselves. But we have a good father who loves us anyway, in spite of ourselves. Right. And he's the one who... who <laughs> who gives us grace where we don't deserve it in the first place at all. He, he really could just sit back and say, yep, there's a pothole in the road and you're about to smack right into it and you're about to hurt yourself. No, he says, even though you're doing wrong and you've, you messed up and you transgressed against your brother, I'm pushing your car out of the way and you're going to avoid that mistake that you, know, you would have made without my intervention. And sometimes we have no knowledge of it at all. Just think of all the times you're driving through traffic and you have that narrow mist. That narrow mist, not always a narrow mist, but sometimes we come through it, right, Brother Paul? But um, 
But, you know, I, I think sometimes, well, that was a narrow miss. And I've been, I've had a bad attitude all day long. I, I, I don't know why even God, you know, helped me out just now. So, you know, suffer yourselves to be defrauded because God always gives us way more grace than we deserve. We should always give our brothers, um, and sometimes they have no idea that they even, you know, you might be harboring some kind of ill will towards them because of something they said to you, and they might not even remember it. They, they might say, you know what, I didn't think we had anything between us, but hey, bring it to them. If, if you feel like you, if it's just messing you up that much, and you bring it to them, say, hey, brother, this is what you've said to me. You've, you really messed me up. I'm losing sleep. I'm thinking about it all the time. I'm mad. And uh, I really would feel better if you apologized and we got this right. And they could say, well, I don't see it that way. I don't see it that way at all. I don't think I owe you an apology. Suffer yourselves to be defrauded and move on. You know, love covers a multitude of sins. And, and the ultimate goal, what God wants, is for his children to get along. You're going to get along in heaven. You might as well make it early on the service. You might as well get used to it now. Um, and... The last thing I want to talk about is going forward from here. Um, Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Right, Brother Landon? But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Um, just like Brother Fan was preaching this morning, he kind of did like a, uh, a recap to what he preached when he, when he first got started here at the church. But we got to keep the main thing the main thing, you know. Keep our eye on charity, King James Bible, preaching the right gospel, the only gospel, faith alone in Jesus Christ, soul winning, getting people saved. That's what our main objectives is. That's our first priority and just putting God first at all times. Uh, the secondary objectives, you know, trying to teach the world about a post-trib rapture and trying to wake up American Zionism and all this stuff. That's all well and good, but that's all secondary at the end of the day. Um, like I said uh, earlier, I was kind of likening our church to getting started on a marathon. And yet we took a big fall and a trip right on that mile and a half mark. Uh, but we've, we're up and going. It didn't take us out of the race completely. We're still moving forward. But sometimes you're, you're moving at a slower pace and you don't see the results coming nearly as fast as you want. You know, you can read the book of Acts in a couple of hours, and you can see on every page, every chapter, they're just blowing things out of the water. They're just doing all these great works for God, and you're saying, wow, man, just the early church was just after it. We should be just like that. But you don't. You also need to understand that you can cover, you can read Acts in, in a couple of hours, but that's the entire lifetime of these apostles. Right. You know, it starts off with Paul just getting started when he was Saul, and it concludes with him when he's pretty much concluded his race. You know, and we have a lot better things in store for us. We can encourage ourselves with our victories of the past. But even if you feel like we're kind of treading water or we're on a treadmill and it's it's happening, we get we're getting visitors, but we want our church to grow. That's what our that's what one of the big things I would like to see is our church grow for us to outgrow this space and get into a new bigger building. But you know, sometimes it's it's easy to get discouraged when you when you say, Hey, you know, I planted this tree, the tree's just not growing. There's a, a little story I'll tell you. When Heather and I first got married, we planted these trees. They were uh, uh, flowering pear trees. And I I got out there and watered those things all the time. And year after year, they did not grow. And I'm just like, man, they did not grow. And, and we finally, uh, we built our new home and we moved away from that location. And we go around there and those trees are 20 feet tall, 25 feet tall. It's like, great. You wait for us to move away for you start to grow, you know. But you don't see what's going on under the surface. You don't see those roots are spreading out. And, and you know, the things that we've gone through are made us stronger. And it's, it's made, made our solid foundation a lot uh, able to withstand more and more. And so that's all. I think it, take, a, take an ice cube, stick it in your freezer, and turn the heat up a little bit. Let it go up to 25 degrees. 
Still gonna, that ice cube's going to be just as solid as it was. 26 degrees. Solid ice cube. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. And then 32 starts to sweat. 33, it's gone. And it just melts away. So, I mean, it's just sometimes you got to put in the work and prime that pump over and over again. And then here comes the water just gushing out. So, I don't know if that's going to be in our experience where we just have to keep on grinding. And then one day we look around and the last six months the, the Lord has added, you know, eight or nine, ten, twenty different families. And we're just like, we got to go right now. We're open the back doors because we have no more room. I don't know if it's going to be that way, but whose job is it to build the church? It's not, a, it's not our. Our job is to be obedient. It's God's job to build his church and. That's what we're going to keep trusting for. And uh, that's where I'm going to end it. Oh, Galatians 6, 9 is where I'm going to end it. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We ask that you please just allow us to keep in mind where we've come from and all the great things that we have in store in the future, Lord, that we keep trusting in you to build our church. And we thank you for all the many blessings to come. Please bless the next preacher up. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.